Well, g'day, curd nerds. G'day, curd nerds. Well, 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 g'day, curd nerds. <laughs> Welcome to another Ask the Cheese Man. I'm so happy to be here. Uh, for those who don't know, I am Gavin Weber, and I'm the Chief Curd Nerd and host of the show. And today I'll be attempting to answer your home cheese making questions, as always. Uh, good fun. Um, big thank you goes out to, let's get rid of that. A <laughs> big thank you goes out to Santosh Thomas, being a new YouTube member. Thank you, Santosh. And uh, new patron, Roz. Thank you, Roz, for your patronage. Uh, I really appreciate all of the financial members, uh, present and past, for supporting the show. Without it, Kim and I couldn't keep making all these wonderful cheese videos. And she does support me a heck of a lot more than anybody knows um, in the background. Okay. Um, don't forget that we are live on YouTube. Facebook and Twitch. Not many people over on Twitch, but if you're there, g'day. How are you? All righty. Um, some housekeeping before we say g'day. Yes, it is my birthday uh, tomorrow, technically. But uh, close the stream. Why not have a birthday today? That'll be good fun. Uh, so videos that are in production today are Fundy Fog. Uh, I've just got to wrap those babies today, um, and I should be able to release the video this week. Alpine Blossom, which is based on my Gruyere recipe, and it's going to have lovely flowers and herbs on the outside. That's taking some time. I've got to wait until the cheese matures um, before I can put uh, the uh, flowers and herbs and stuff on the outside. Um, things I'm doing today, besides a bit of gardening, I'm going to be smoking some cheese. It's certainly cold enough here. I think it's like five degrees at the moment. Celsius, that is. Uh, so yeah, I'll be smoking some cheese using my, um, barbecue hood, not turning the barbecue on, of course. I've just got my little smoking machine and hopefully that captures all the stuff. Now, update on the 12 hours of cheese, which will be in... Two weekends time now, so the 12th of June, uh, 11th of June for some of you, if you're behind Australian time. Uh, I've got four confirmed guests so far, which is fantastic. I'm just tracking down a couple more. Um, and uh, there will be a live smoked cheese taste test. So the cheese that I'm smoking today, I'll put that video into the stream and I will be doing a live tasting near the end of the day. So that'll be good fun. Also, uh, no show next Sunday. It's birthday celebrations for both Kim and I. Um, her birthday is uh, eerily close to mine. So, uh, yeah, we're both turning 21, <laughs> of course. Um, so, yeah, so we're having the weekend off next weekend. Um, and also, don't forget, at 30 minutes past the hour, we have the gallery which is all good fun. Okay, um, lots of g'days and happy birthdays and stuff. Um, and don't forget, if you're very excited today and you want to do something special, there's you can light up the Curd Nerd light with a super chat. That goes off like a frog in a sock. Uh, and, uh, yeah, that's all good. Um, let's say g'day to a few people. What do we got here? Um, first cabs off the rank this morning was Anne Vanderkamp, uh, and you would have seen her thumbnail here. Here's a quick shot of it. Beautiful looking Yarg cheese, which was um, based on my Kefili recipe, and it had nettles wrapped around it and all that sort of stuff. So really cool looking cheese. I loved it. Um, I've actually found some stinging nettles growing in my garden, so I'm going to let them grow. Before, and before they go to seed, which I know they do prolifically and spread seed all over the place, all over my veggie patch, I'm just going to let them grow, pick the leaves, 
blanch them and put them in the freezer and then I'll be able to use them for the next cheese. Uh, so that'll be good fun. I'll see if I can replicate uh, Anne's uh, cheese, the Yarg. Um, also, big good day to Cease, Patrick, uh, who else we've got? Judy Mack, Paul, um, Charlie, uh, Herb. G'day, Herb. Lovely to see you, mate. Jeffrey. G'day, Jeffrey. Uh, who else we've got? Big Eight Man. G'day. <laughs> Great name. I love it. Um, who else? Um, uh, John. G'day, John. Um Tracy from Cheese Needs. And Tracy, I haven't got an email back from you about my um, invitation for the 12 hours of cheese. I sent you all the details. Can you just reply back to say that I've got it? That, sorry, that you've got it. Uh, Jess, good day, Jess. Hannah, hello, Hannah. Um, who else we got there? Uh, uh, Guadalupe, uh, Dennis, um, Annette. Hello, Annette. Uh, mm. Sonia. Um, what else? Uh, Jim, g'day, Jim. <laughs> Love to see you, mate, and thank you for all your support over the years as well. Uh, Donna, hello, Donna. Donna's over on Facebook. Uh, who else we got? Um, uh, Shauna, love to see you, Shauna. I just sent a package out to you the other day. Thank you. Um, and I think it's the first time I've seen you on the chat. It would be fantastic. And I've got these things making lots of noise. Hang on, let me just mute that. Woo, how do I mute? Mute. There we go. All done. Um, who else? El Toro, Diablo. Woo. Hello, how are you? Craig, hello, Craig. Lovely to see you, mate. Uh, get to your question in a sec, I think. Uh, Carolyn uh, DeMayo, I think that's how you say it. Dwayne. Monique, hello, Monique. Um, who else we got? Uh, Jim, hello, Jim. Uh, Shane, Kevin, uh, Linda, and Nicola, and the Bluntsmith. Thank you all for your birthday wishes. Hopefully, I didn't miss anybody. Okay, so questions, questions, questions. Let's have a look. Um, so Herb says, I still have some. Cheese I smoked in January of 2021. It obviously keeps well. So, yeah. So, my plan, Herb, is to um, – I've got some, oh, some really old cheeses, which I'll be showing in the video, of course. Um, and I'm going to smoke – I'm going to smoke a few pieces today, probably three or four, um, all homemade, of course. Uh, cold smoked. Uh, that's the way to do it without the cheese melting. And then once they're smoked and dry again, because they may sweat a little bit from what I've seen, and um, I'll then vacuum pack them and then um, just put them in the kitchen fridge and let the smokiness infuse into the cheese. And hopefully, fingers crossed, they'll be amazing. Uh, I'll taste the cheese before I smoke them and then obviously the live taste test. So thanks, mate. Um, where are we? Um, uh, Sonia says, hello from Charleston, SC, South Carolina. Hopefully you got that right. Uh, I am a new fellow, uh, thanks to a good friend from Oklahoma. A new fo oh, follower fellow. <laughs> oh, I am so funny. Um, okay. Um, Jim says, uh, uh, g'day, Gav, uh, trust everything is well with you and Miss Kim. Yes, Mrs. Kim is uh, doing fine. She's looking after the doggos again today. So that is her job at the moment. Um, the good thing is, um, uh, you, and the reason she hasn't been around a lot is because I've given her a pass basically because before YouTube introduced the um, the the filter on the chat that talked about um, you know I can change the way chat works on YouTube Ch chat on YouTube is usually a a, a crazy thing uh, and you get all sorts of weird comments and stuff and to do a show like this one where we do answer cheese making questions um, it's very hard to filter out the uh, the seed from the chaff 
and uh, with with YouTube comments. But now because of the, we've got that filter, you have to be a member uh, of the channel for at least three hours before you can comment on the stream. Then, yep, all good. So that kind of stops ha her having to do that sort of stuff. So that's good. Um, so yeah, so that that's why she hasn't really been in the um, in the chat or anything like that. But she is going to help me out on um, the twelve hours of cheese because it is a mammoth task, as you saw last year when I did it in July. So she's going to help out in the background, bit of chitty chat, uh, moderation, and stuff like that. So. That'll be good fun. Okay. Um, Craig has a question and says, happy, oh, sorry, hi, Gav, happy birthday. Thank you, mate. Um, when you take uh, when you take cheeses out of the fridge to get to room temperature, if not all finished, can it go back in the fridge? Can this only be done once? Yeah, you can put them back in the fridge as many times as you want. Um, when there's pieces left, yeah, no big deal. Um, I've never come across any issues whatsoever. Um, obviously, don't, uh, you know, when you're serving them up, it's not a hostile environment, you know, that uh, they can get contaminated or anything like that. Um, if you were doing, say, a public cheese board, I probably wouldn't put them back in the fridge because people have been touching them and all that sort of stuff. But if it's just you and your family, then, yeah, no drama. I'm just a little bit worried about hygiene issues but yeah if it's just your own cheese your own family and you know where they've all been and there's something the cat's dragged in then yeah you're fine it's all good all righty um let's have a look um uh kevin says hey gav do you have an equivalent recipe for stinking bishop cheese which is a washed rind cheese um and it, it is very stinky stinky bishop no or well, maybe um look it's stinky bishop is very uh, it's equivalent to the french cheese epois i think that's how you say that um i have a recipe i've never made it uh Reason being is because when I do make washed rind cheeses, they do tend to stink a lot in the cheese fridge. When you open the cheese fridge, all the comments I get from the fam is, um, Gav, you opened up the cheese fridge again. It's very stinky, blah, blah, blah. Don't ever do it again, all that sort of stuff. I take it with a grain of salt because I just make them anyway. Um, but, uh, yeah, it, uh, I haven't got a recipe. But... Uh, there is a recipe, I think, Kevin. Hang on, let me have a look. Uh, in uh, 200 Easy Cheeses, I think there's a recipe for Epoir. Let's have a look. Sorry, I will. EP. Uh, no. Where the heck did I think that was? Maybe it's in a different book. Sorry, consulting the books. I'll find you a recipe. Don't you worry about that. A, B, C, D, E. Maybe not. Oh, okay. You're not in the two main books that I get really good recipes from. This one, sorry. Uh, this is a... I'll put my head there because it's trying to... There you go. So focus on that. That's the old edition. There's a fourth edition out of that book, um, Home Cheese Making by Ricky Carroll. Um which I don't have here at the moment, but there may be a recipe in there. But no, sorry, Kevin. I thought I had one. Doesn't matter. Um, Tracy says, you did. I got it. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Tracy. So I will lock you in for that time slot. Mm, very exciting. I know it's a little bit late in the evening, but we did discuss it and we should be good for you. That Not for me. It's not late in the evening for me. Um. Uh, what else? Paul's just said, my last cheese was made with pasteurised, homogenised whole milk. It seems like the curds set okay, clean break, but easily fractured. I tried to gently uh, tried to gently stir, but still different than raw milk. Thank you. Yes, it is indeed. So uh, it's the pasteurisation process, the heating of the milk um, is usually the issue for that sort of stuff if you've had a calcium chloride that's great hopefully you would have got a bit of a better set look it with um 
but they do tend to fracture as long as it just doesn't go sloppy. If your curds fracture a bit, that's okay. You've seen enough of my videos now that you can see when I'm stirring the curds what they look like after a period of time. So a lot of people think uh, curds fracture, they don't. They naturally do split as you start to stir them anyway. So it's not that much of a big deal. But as long as you've got a nice result in cheese, you should be okay, mate. But yeah. Um, da -da 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 -da. Uh, Herb's talking about his smoked cheese again. says, the ones I did turned out stunning. Excellent. That is good news. That gives me some hope. I'm using, oh, what's the wood? Is it mesquite? I think that's how you say it. I think it's mesquite or hickory. One of the two. I've got two packets of, of wood chips. Um, and we've got a, a, a super chat. Thank you so much. And that's from Ole. I think that's how you say your name. I don't know if I got that right, but thank you so much. Let's have a look at that one. Oops, did I get the right one? There we go. Click the right one. Have I ever made, tried to make brown cheese from Norway? Yes, indeed I have. I have made brown cheese from Norway. Let me just pull up my little searchy bar and I'll find the cheese for you. Think I can get that right. Let me have a look. Can I get a? Oh, let's have a look. Oh, hopefully that's not playing in stream. Share, copy. Here we go. See, I'm doing moderation like Kim used to. There we go. There's the recipe for my sauce brown cheese. Uh, very cool. So hopefully that all works. Oop, oop, Gav, what are you doing? Radio. So there you go. Hopefully that works for you. And thank you so much for your, uh, what's that, Krona? No. Okay, Norway Krona, 219. I don't know how much that is, but sounds like a lot of money. Um, so thank you. <laughs> Let me get back to where I was on the chat. Let's have a look. Boop, boop. Um, yeah, last, right, this one is from Shane. Shane says, only really question I have is, don't you ever get bored of cheese? God, blasphemer. And uh, do, do, and what to make and do with it? Well, eat it, of course. That's what you do with it. No, I never get bored of cheese, Shane. And another super chat going off. Thank you so much, Patricia, this time. And Patricia says... Um, and thank you for the kind $5 Canadian. Oops, late to the party. Happy birthday for tomorrow, Gav. From your birthday, buddy. Hope you celebrate royally. Indeed, I will be packing orders like a good little trooper uh, for all the curd nerds that are putting orders over the weekend at Little Green Workshops. Um, so, yes, I'm the chief box packer. <laughs> so, uh, And uh, usually you get a little note, you know, unless Kim's packed the box, of course. We share. Um, so, yeah, I send little notes to all the curd nerds in my parcels. So I love it. It's great fun trying to connect with uh, with uh, the customers and curd nerds. So that's good fun. And, yes, happy birthday to you too, Patricia. We are birthday buddies. Um, you'll be celebrating a little bit later than what I will be. But thank you for your super chat, mate. I should be super chatting you. Uh, and Patricia, for those who don't know, is going to be one of the guests on the 12 hours of cheese. So I'm very excited about that as well. All righty. Um, next question is from... It's from... Sorry. Uh, we did that question from Shane. Uh, this one from Jess. Jess says, or Jesse, sorry, Jesse. Uh, I'm planning to add an internal layer of honey to the Colby I'm making today. Are there any concerns with adding a source of sugar to cheese? Yes, it will probably ferment. Uh, so that may be an issue uh, and you'll get some, depends on how much wild yeast is in the air as well. But yeah, may normally honey is rubbed on the outside of the cheese, so where it doesn't ferment. 
um, in case, in fact, there's a great little recipe by Mary Carlin in her book, Art, uh, How to Artisan Cheese Making at Home, I think it's called. And she does a honey rubbed Montazio. So you could go and check that out, but I don't think I would add it to the center. Um, Rub on the outside, no drama. In the middle, not so much. And it'll be quite a sticky mess, I think, too. Um, but that's my thoughts on it. You give it a go if it's, if you want to. Don't let me stop you. But that's what I think will happen. Um, uh, not Kevin says, uh, Gavin Weber, on and off viewer here, but happy birthday. Thank you, mate. Uh, what's your take on Gruyere? It's a lovely cheese. Gruyere is a lovely cheese. Uh, lovely Swiss style cheese without the eyes, obviously. Um, tasty, nutty. I like it a lot. Uh, in fact, I made it quite a few times, so it it is a nice cheese. Uh, El Toro says um, I made Parmesan, but it's starting to get green spots. Can I shave them off, or is it lost? Just wash them off with brine, mate. The green spots will go away. It's a strain of Penicillium candidum, so. Wash them off with a simple brine solution and let it dry and you're good to go and keep it maturing and stuff. It'll be good. Uh, worst comes to worst, start rubbing oil on the outside of the cheese, olive oil. Lightly, just a light coat, and you should be good to go. Persnickety. Lovely to see you, mate. Happy, says, happy birthday, good sir. Thank you very much. Uh, you started me on the cheesy path this time last year when one of your videos hit my recommended lists. Uh, before that i think it's before that thought cheese was complicated but you broke it down thank you for uh, persnickety kitty <laughs> very cool um yeah look i that's what i try to do i try to break cheese making into it into its simplest form even though some of my recipes are a little bit complicated but i try and show you the basic steps step you know if you can cook and do a recipe like in the kitchen, um, then you can make most of the time you can make cheese. Um, sometimes it's more of an art than science, but there is a lot of science behind cheese making. Uh, okay, uh, another super chat. Um, and let me just get the thing the two, my goodness, two. Hang on. Uh, Let's make the light go off a second time because I think we I, I got too excited there. There we go. There's another one. I love that. Um, so uh, we've got another one from Ole. Uh, says, I subbed after your Shropshire Blue. Such nice work with your cheeses. And have another one. About 31 Australian dollars. Love from Norway. Thank you. $31. Goodness me. I'll be able to buy my cheesecake now instead of having to make it <laughs> for my birthday. Thank you, mate. Appreciate it. And Persnickety, thank you so much. $20 US, that's amazing. That's about $31 Australian as well. Um, happy birthday and thank you for your good work. No, thank you. Really appreciate it. All righty. Um, let's have a look. There must be, there's some more questions here somewhere. I know there is. Um uh, we did that one. Shauna says, um, I tried making Red Windsor yesterday and it collapsed when I turned it over for the first time. Any ideas uh, what went wrong? Uh, yeah, look, when I soaked the Red Windsor in the port for the first hour, uh, by keeping it warm, it seemed to all hold together. And, and there's another super chat, and we'll get the, to that in a minute. That's from Alex. Thank you, Alex. Appreciate it. Um, yeah, so if you're not using that, uh, the louder basket that I have, which, you know, is, you don't have to turn it, which is a fantastic thing. Cause I reckon if I try to pull it out of that mold, it may have tried to collapse as well, but I was quite lucky to have that mold. Um, for those who don't have that mold and I didn't really think about this step very well, obviously in the video, uh, the curds have to be kept warm, uh, as you saw. Cold curds will simply fall apart, especially when they've been so soaked in alcohol for so long. Um, uh, if it fell apart, then obviously you're going to press a lot harder, uh, Shauna. So I think that's where 
get that pressure in as as quick as you can if the curds are starting to go cold they won't knit together um all that wine all that port wine will not help at all um so yeah you really curds got to be warm if after one hour you think they're going to dry that the, the curds are going to be too dry then press it after an hour instead of two but sorry that happened to you, mate. Hopefully you recovered from it. Um, uh, Donna's got a question. Might have been answered already, but can I join the chat on YouTube as a subscriber or do I have to join? It says subscribers only mode. Uh, Donna, I've got the settings um, all done and I'll get to you in, in a minute, Alex. Sorry, mate. Um, you don't have to join. Joining, you become a member. Um, and yeah, you would be able to chat as a member. That's no hassle at all. But uh, I've got it set for subscribers must be have must have been subscribed for at least three hours before the live stream starts, so I don't get riffraff. That's all. And you're not riffraff, Donna. So you can continue to chat on on Facebook. I get them through, and it goes up onto YouTube anyway. So that's fine. Okay, um, and let's get to Alex. He he did a super chat, which was great. And thank you so much, mate. Alex, and 10 pounds, that's like $600 Australian. Um, just jokes. <laughs> uh, can I buy raw buffalo milk delivered here in the UK, which is, oh, sorry, I can buy raw buffalo milk delivered here in the UK, which is intriguing. What cheese do you recommend that can be made safely? Well, the straight comes straight to mind is um, a buffalo de mo mozzarella de buffalo. So traditional buffalo mozzarella. Um, I do have a recipe for it. Um, but, 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 let me see. Can I find... Let me find it. Uh, uh, mozzarella. See if I can find the... Good mozzarella video. Here we are. Hopefully, there we go. Ads. Aren't they a curse? They're not really. Um, so here is the recipe for my mozzarella. So instead of using cow's milk, use buffalo milk, obviously. Um, and you should be good to go. So uh, use that. And it will be the creamiest mozzarella you ever did have. And it will be beautiful. So, uh, yeah, get into that. Thanks, Alex. So hopefully that helps for you. Um, where are we up to? So much love. Cheese is love. Yes, indeed. <laughs> yeah, I agree. That That's why I keep making cheese. Um, let's have a look. <clears throat> um, Uh, questions, questions. Uh, this one's from Upbeat Health and says, Hello, Gav. Happy day. Oh, that's birthday. Um, TM, trademark. <laughs> um, I've had some very satisfying results and now even have a cheese cave. Uh, do you document files for your cheese recipes in case there's no internet and we need to make cheese? Yes. Two books, actually. Um, uh, both are ebooks, but you can save them. They're PDFs. Um, let me just go and show you where you can get those. Uh, we do a bit of screeny sharing here. Can I, can I do this successfully without looking like a klutz? Um, there we go. Um, so, uh, there's a stream. Happy birthday. Right. So we go to, <clears throat> excuse me. So over on YouTube. So this is my YouTube channel, Gavin Weber. Can't miss me. Got a tick because that's good. So you've got a store and here are the two books. Uh, so one is, well, this is in Australian dollars because I'm in Australia. It'll come up with whatever currency you are in or, or you, you have, sorry, um, so keep calm and make more cheese and keep calm and make cheese. Um, that was the sound for the gallery. Uh, so they're both there and you can download them and print them off if you want to. So there are where the recipes are and you can grab them there if you like. So that's where I document. 
Um, on my uh, cheese blog, uh, Little Green Cheese, there are some documented recipes, but when I started writing books, I kind of put them in the books. So, because uh, people were asking for them and wanted to, to pay money for them. So, I was very happy to do that. Okay. Um, that is time for, let me just put a star on that one so I know we're up to. Um, it is time for the gallery. So, let's cue that up. Let me get the gallery pictures up. Let's share that as well. Um, let's, here we go. Share. Here we go. So that's the happiest cheese on the planet. All right. Let's see if I've got, whose cheese, whose cheese is that? That is uh, Celeste's cheese. Um, that's not Celeste. I've got a little note from Celeste somewhere. Where is it? Celeste. Here we go. All right, and another super chat. Thank you so much for that. We'll have to get to that after the gallery. Let's see, who was the, who was the super chat from? That's from Ole again. Um, okay, so that's cool. Thank you so much, mate. I'll get to that in a second. All right, so this is from Celeste. Um, it is a happy cheese. It says, hi, Gav. Hoping you can give me some advice on where I went wrong with my Edom. So this is an Edom, this cheese here. So second time the wax split, where did I go wrong? Vacuum sealed it now as only six weeks into maturation. Um, is there a second picture? I think there is. That is it there. That's the Edom. Uh, it looks like a case of late blown, uh, which happened did happen to mine. So what you can do is uh, put in a, um, a protective culture, uh, in Australia, I do have some called Sacco LPRA. Oh, let me just um, put my face back. So LPRA, which is a protective culture by Sacco. It has Lactobacillus lactis, subspecies Ramosus and Plantarum are the two uh, cultures. So uh, you can check that out. We've got some in stock on in the store at Little Green Workshops. Um, also, there's another protective culture that I found lately. Danisco choose it. It's called Holback. Uh, LC is the one you're looking for. And that has the same strains uh, of culture that stop late blowing, which is what it's known as. Okay, so the next uh, picture, this one is also from Celeste. And she goes on to say, um, this is a farmhouse blue. I used a cup and a half of buttermilk to culture 10 litres of unhomogenized milk. Centre always seems moist, skin slip. Can't seem to dry that out. Four weeks into maturation, will the rind dry out? Not sure if I should get rid of it. Oh, I wouldn't get rid of it. It'll turn out to be a lovely, soft blue cheese. It's because, yeah, it's by, by using the buttermilk uh, instead of culture, um, because I'm pretty sure I used, with the farmhouse blue that I made, um, I used uh, MA4001, which is a low gassing, low proteolysis um, culture. Uh, buttermilk has um, four different strains usually in it, um, very similar to, say, Flora Danica, and it'll make the cheese a lot softer as well and buttery, and this is certainly the result I can see there. Look, just keep, um, if you've already pierced it, there should be some blue veins on the inside. If you can't wait, I don't know how many weeks, four weeks into maturation. Ooh, look, you could probably, yeah, you could probably eat it now. It wouldn't be very, it won't have that much of a big blue flavor, but it will have some sort of blue flavor to it. But look, just, you can just keep doing what you're doing. It should turn out all right. If it starts to go too soft, eat it. It'll be fine. Uh, and I think the last one, it's not a question. This is uh, also from, uh, Celeste, and it is Morbier. Uh, it's a success story. So different, definitely didn't get a definitive ash line, but it tastes amazing. Well done. It does look nice. I think a bit of that is just drag when you cut the cheese, but that happens to all sorts of these cheeses. But I like, it looks like a little bit of marbling. It looks really cool where some of the ash um, spilt over. So very cool. Thank you, Celeste, for sending in your photos. Appreciate it. This one's from Costanzo. 
Uh, let me just get the blurb up for Costanzo. Oops, that's not the way we do things around here. Sorry. Uh, Costanzo says, uh, this is my Yalsberg at four months. Um, I used big eyes for Yalsberg. It's not really supposed to have that many um, or any at all. Oh, yeah, it does have some. Not Sorry, it does have eyes. What am I talking about? But this also looks like it's had a bit of late blowing. Um, and you can tell by the see the cracks here, the big cracks and, and big ones up there as well. Very robust CO2 development. Um, I would, I, yeah, you look, you could. I, I wouldn't add a protective culture to it because that'll just stop all eye formation. So it says, yeah, I use a mesophilic, uh, aromatic mesophilic culture instead of propionic shamani. Um, I thought I would get small eyes, but got big ones. Vacuum packed for three months after one month. Uh, it shrank, maybe it was better to wax at my wife. She likes it better than the one she bought from the store for it was more creamy. Uh, P.S. Everything else, I followed your recipe. Thanks, Costanza. If Look, if your wife loved it, then it's a success. It looks lovely. So it's good looking cheese, but yeah, it has gone through a, a lot of CO2 development there. Um, and yeah, uh, aromatic mesophilic culture is a gas producer, so... That, that's where you got the eyes from. But yeah, great looking cheese. Thanks, Costanzo. Right, uh, the next one is from... This looks like another Yalsberg to me. This one's from Diego. Uh, Diego, where are you, Diego? There's your, little, there's your blurb. Here it is. Uh, this is not a Yalsberg. This is a Guido cheese. Right, sorry, my bad, but it, it looks nice. Um, it says, hi, Gavin. After more than a year, I came back to cheese making, which is a great way of relaxing for me. I made a guido, followed your recipe with pasteurized non-homogenized milk. Um, I believe that I followed every sanitizing procedure. After three weeks in backpack today, I opened it. I had seen the way inside the vacuum pack at the start, but the volume stayed the same. The cheese was slightly wet and the amount of whey was a little. The smell was fantastic. That's the important thing. When I cut the cheese, it was firm yet full of holes, as you can see in the picture. I am worried that despite taking care of hygiene, my cheese may have been contaminated. I just tasted a small bit of the cheese and it tastes great, but I'm still uh, still deciding whether to throw it in the bin or eat it. I know the saying, if in doubt, throw it out, but any comment will be appreciated. Thank you once again for this awesome activity possible to us curd nerds. You're, you're welcome, Diego. Um, no, don't throw it away. That's lovely. It's a good-looking cheese. Now, you can have a look. You can see, if you look at the eyes, let me just, can I zoom in here? Whoop, good quality picture, by the way. So you can see that the eyes um, are shiny inside. So this is a gas produced uh, in the cheese. And it looks like CO2 to me. Uh, it doesn't look anything nefarious, nefarious. Um, so... Yeah, I think, look, you can, it looks like a wild propionic bacterium has contaminated this. Doesn't look like, does it doesn't look like late blowing, especially this early stage, like Guido's only like a three-week cheese. Um, uh, there looks like there has been some gas production, which is okay. Certainly not early blown. Early blown looks like sp a sponge. So, and it, early blown cheese happens as you're pressing the curds. So this this is definitely not that. Um, I think it's safe to eat. Now, if you don't want this to happen again, um, obviously the milk is a sore. It doesn't matter how much hygiene you've practiced. If the milk's not up to par, which this may have been, and depending on the culture you used, um, uh, a way to avoid this is, like I said before, is use um, LPRA from Sacco or Holback LC. And use a 60, 1 64th of a teaspoon per 10 litres of milk. And that will stop this uh, CO2 activity. So thanks, Diego, for sending in your photo. It's lovely. All right. Um, and this one's from Habib. And uh, this is the last one today. And Habib says, Dear Gavin, you will find attached to this email my first ever Manchego-style cheese made from whole-fat cow's milk. The cheese is almost 10 months old. It was matured 
with a natural rind rubbed in olive oil for the first two months uh, to dry. Well, um, and then vacuum packed because it was turning dry to the touch. After cutting, indeed, the paste is drier than it should be, but I think uh, then I sorry drier than it should be i think but the taste is gorgeous uh it is fairly sweet really nutty and a bit piquant uh due to the lipase i added i presume yeah indeed let me have a look so that was the weight of the cheese 1.5 kilos and there it is there yeah nice dry a bit of a grainy and it actually looks very white um habib like sheep's milk uh, manchego so uh yeah it looks really good I, I love the way that it's kind of grainy a little bit grainy uh normal manchego no, ma sheep's milk manchego from spain is very dry it's a dry cheese uh, i wanted to share these photos with you and thank you for your live sessions that i always try to watch but find it difficult in summertime um it will be between 1 and 2 a.m my time uh, best regards habib thanks habib appreciate it mate um, and yeah, great cheese, great outcome. Um, I think you nailed it using the cow's milk recipe for Manchego. So that is all of the uh, gallery photos. If you want to send in a gallery photo, then you can do so. Let me just show you how to do that. Um, let me just share my screen again. I love the sharing. Uh, this one, this one. Okay, so we go to the channel again, like we did before. Uh, we go to the About tab over here. And down here, Details. For business inquiries, uh, you got to sign in. I'm not signed in currently. I'm in incognito mode. Uh, sign in to see the email address. And then you just got to do a little quick capture. Um, and bingo, boingo, you've got my email address. So send in the... Um, let me just... Uh, kill that so send in your photos i would love to see them and even if they're good bad or ugly um, i will comment on them and if you're looking for advice happy to give it uh during the stream so yeah no problems there at all now um there was a super chat and i've got to find where the heck it's gone ba -ba -ba, where is it uh down here here it is uh, and it was from Ole again, says, um, I cannot write to the chat because I'm subscribed whilst watching a made for kids video. Um, I've been a subscriber for quite some time. Anyway, my last donation was for the happy birthday. Thank you very much, mate. And you, I don't know what this donation is because oh, happy birthday again. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Okay, um, let's go to the where I was before, there was a pinned message. I did a pin. I don't know how this works. Hey, there we go. Can we unpin it? Um, okay. So um, Donna says, I'm making a cheddar today. I think it has 1.5 mils of liquid rennet, but I only have a rennet tablet. How do I convert this? Uh, Donna, what type of rennet tablets are you using? is what I kind of need to know. Um, so uh, let me know in the chat and uh, we can try and figure it out. If they're the Mad Millie tablets, uh, it's one tablet per four litres of milk, So, um, which is the ones we sell. Um, so hopefully that helps. I may have preempted the question, which is good. Okay. Um, next question is from... YouTuber, <laughs> cool, uh, says, Gavin, I made a chowder using 10 different types of milk using a spreadsheet. I got it back to 4.4% fat milk. Um, using ultra pasteurized milk, raw and organic. I did use calcium, and cord, ca calcium chloride and the curds fractured. Goodness me. Okay. Um, probably because you used ultra pasteurized in the mix there, mate. So that will be bad. Um, doesn't matter what percentage of raw or organic milk you've added in as well. Uh, if the bulk of it was uh, ultra pasteurized, it just will not set a curd. It doesn't matter what you do. Um, so 
uh, the follow-up question was, will it taste good? Mm, yeah, probably. Uh, we haven't seen a photo. It looks the part. Uh, if it looks like a cheese, smells like a cheese, then it's probably a cheese. <laughs> okay. Uh, follow-up to my question to Donna, while she used Mad Millie Rennet tablets. So, yeah, so each tablet is sets four litres of milk. So depends on the recipe. So if you've got an eight-litre recipe, use two tablets. Make sure they're dissolved in non-chlorinated water first, a quarter of a cup. They'll all dissolve because you can't just throw the tablet into the milk. It doesn't work. Um, so, yeah, make sure it's mixed with the water first and then pour it in like you normally do with liquid rennet. So all good. Uh, Stephen says, happiest of birthdays from Texas when making small batches of things like creme fraiche, 250 to 500 milliliters of cream. How important is it to accurately measure the small amount of culture needed? Um, how accurate? Oh, if you overculture it, it goes sour. That's that's the result. If you underculture it, then you get a little bit of thickening, not a lot. Um, it yeah. So that, that's the results of it. I'll let you go from there. But thank you, Steve. Um, yeah. Uh, da, 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 da. uh where are we? Uh, Alex says, throw in some garlic if you're smoking cheese. Uh, they're lovely smoked as well. And oh, butter. Oh, interesting. Um, I think I've got a stick of butter in the fridge. I don't know if I've got any garlic though, unfortunately. Um, uh, Titus says, uh, what bacteria makes cheese smell? Uh, depends on which type of cheese you're talking about. It could be any, it could be lots of them. So the smelly cheese uh, with the orange rind or red rind uh, is a washed cheese uh, and you wash the outside of the cheese and you add a bacteria called Brevibacterium linens and that causes the smell we all associate with, say, cheeses like Limburger, Oka, Port Salou, um starts with a T, uh, Tilsit, that's another one, um, and, uh, yeah, so, and Stinking Bishop even. Um, yeah, cool. So, yeah, that's answered that question. Um, ba -ba. um There you go. Oh, you've answered the question yourself. All right. Yeah, I'd... There you go. Well done. Um, Lacret says, question, what do you think to substitute smoker to smoke cheese with natural, naturally smoked salt? Uh, you look, yeah, if you've got smoked salt, you can use that as your cheese salt. Um, it may impart a little bit of a flavor, probably not too much. Um, but, yeah, that'll work. Um, I've also used liquid smoke um, and rubbed that on the outside and put a bit in the milk as well. And that gave my, what cheese was it? I think it was a howder. Uh, and it gave a slight smoky cheese flavor. So that was good. Okay, so we got 12 minutes to go. Let me just, um, yeah, let me just uh, find the next question. Uh, this one's from Linda. And Linda says, happy birthday. Does a humidifier affect the cheese i live in northwest arizona where it's hot and dry with little humidity i'm using one in the cheese cave to help cheese cave to help with humidity um uh, does well humidity does affect the cheese um uh, cheese when it's ripening in its natural state without any wax or vacuum packing that sort of thing needs humidity to stop the rind from cracking and drying out so uh, yes, it does affect the cheese. Um, if you're using one in your cheese cave, that's fantastic. So you're doing everything right there. Um, next question. Uh, Windustries says, are there any impossible cheeses? Nothing's impossible. <laughs> Throw enough money, time, effort, one of those things into any endeavor and nothing's impossible. There we go. Um, ba, ba, ba. Uh, and follow up from YouTubers is curds knitted together beautifully on my howder 
some real handsome cheeses, got four kilos out of the batch. That's that's a big batch of milk. Um, uh, let's have a look. What else? Uh, this one's from Jim. Jim says, subscriber status is below the membership status. Uh, you'll only need to be a subscriber to chat. And it's indeed right. I think that was asking, answering the question from Donna before. Um, and this one's from Ellie. Ellie says, happy birthday. I saw one of your videos was in the Netflix series, Ugly Delicious and reminded me of you. Thank you very much. Yes, one of my videos, uh, what was it? Quick mozzarella, I believe, was in Ugly Delicious, only for a couple of seconds, only for a couple of seconds on the screen. It was just that, you know, the screenshot of the YouTube channel type thing. It wasn't really the video playing or anything, so it was no copyright infringement. Um, but, yeah, it's very cool. I did, I did see that. Somebody mentioned it, and I had to go find it. In fact, it wasn't... Um, it wasn't on Australian Netflix at the time, so I had to do a hack, do a VPN, and go to the US Netflix. And, uh, yeah, I saw it there. That was cool. Um, uh, Lacrette says, um, hi, it's a blind cheesemaker here. I have a question. What do you think about substituting smoking with smoked Mexican salt? I think I already answered that, but thank you so much. Yes, do it. Just do it. Uh, and the flavors will be great. So I look. I in the past I've um, substituted pink Himalayan salt uh, as cheese salt because it's non iodized as well, and that works fine. Pink Himalayan salt. Um, I've never used a smoked salt, but as long as it doesn't have any iodine in it, it should be good to go. It won't kill the bacteria, um, and it should impart some sort of flavor. So that's that's good. Uh, next question is. Um, from uh, this one's from Gypsy Smith. Happy birthday. Thank you, Gypsy. Um, uh, lots of questions. The YouTuber's telling everybody about his cheese. Well done. Um, persnickety, persnickety kitty. <laughs> I've been making Colby of late something about the coastal salt air here. Three months and the texture of Velveeta with a full flavor of Colby. Sold two pounds yesterday. Well done. Um, yeah, look, environment has a lot to do with cheese making, as the French have known for thousands of years. The terroir, I think I said that right, of the cheese, which is the environment, the makeup, all of the bacteria that's in the makeup, the yeasts, everything, all the stuff that's in the milk naturally from where you live has a lot to do with the outcome of the cheese. Now, this is really only so for raw milk because when you pasteurize it, it kills all the all the other bacteria that are in the milk. So um, really only for raw milk cheeses that all of these terroir factors, terroir, terroir, I can't even get the word right. Wish Fred was here from the cheese channel. He speaks French, I don't. Uh, okay, um, moving right along. Uh, Lindus has a question, says, I'm using a humidifier with a controller in the cheese cave. It's very hot and dry with very low humidity. All my cheeses are either vacuum-packed, waxed, or in ripening boxes. Will I have any problems? You probably don't even need a humidifier if you're doing that. So vacuum-packed, don't need a humidifier. Waxing, yeah, look, the humidity's got to be over 50%. Well, the wax tends to dry out and then it starts to crack. So yeah, you've got to have a bit of humidity in there. Uh, if you're using ripening boxes, that's, you know, humidity controlled anyway if they're closed. So no, look, you won't have any problems using the humidifier. It's just probably not necessary. Okay. Um, got another super chat there. And this one's from Paul. Thank you, Paul. Appreciate it. Um, and Paul says, um, $25 US. Goodness me. Thank you, mate. Uh, happy birthday, Gavin, and early birthday wishes to Kim too. Thanks for all uh, you both do. No, thank you, mate. Appreciate it. And thanks for watching. It's great fun. All right, we've got five minutes to go. A couple more questions I think we've got. 
if I can get back to, um, let's have a look. Oh, no, we talked about that. We talked about that. A lot of chitty chat between the curd nerds, which is great. I love to see that in the chat. Um, uh, no, answer that. Sorry, I'll I'll get to where we are in a minute. Mm. Uh, right, so that's where we're talking about cheeses. Uh, Persnickety says, actually looking for a cheese made with port recipe. Uh, Sister-in-law inquired, so I'm interested in making this. So that'll be the Red Windsor, I think you're talking about there. Um, and been thinking about the acid and the wine and the lactic acid and how to dial that down. Yeah, maybe just soak a little bit less is what I mean. Brian Weber, a man after my own name. Uh, hi, mate. As soon as I move to a larger house, I'm buying a whole new kit, including a cheese press. My shoulders are getting sore from manual pressing. <laughs> uh, happy birthday. Enjoy your day. Thank you, Brian. Appreciate it, mate. Um, okay. So, uh, Joey's on Facebook. Hello, Joey. Joey has... We have a lovely conversation sometimes. Um, where are we? Steph says, um, hello, Gavin. Have you ever considered making hoop cheese? Apparently, it's a rare cheese to, uh, to see due to being hard to automate with a short shelf life. Uh, somebody gave me a recipe for hoop cheese once, and it requires raw milk. So there's nothing else to it. I think it's just raw milk, um, some rennet, and that's about it. Uh, it's mainly made in the southern states of United States of America. Um, and yes, it has a very short shelf life. Because I don't even think they add salt to it. So uh, it tends to go off pretty quick. But no, I do have a recipe. I would have to dig it out. I don't even know if I've got it still. Um, but uh, yeah, I couldn't make it because I didn't have any, um, I didn't have any raw milk. So. All right. Um, Hello, Shiny says, I found some really fine pink Himalayan salt. I use it on everything. It's so soft, not gritty, lovely. Yeah, it work, works in cheese. I've used uh, fine pink Himalayan salt as well. All righty. Um, three minutes to go. Do we have any more questions? I'm sure there are some somewhere. Annette, thank you so much for the super chat. Um, let's just turn the light off. Annette says... Uh, happy birthday, Gav. Thanks for all your wonderful cheese-making videos. My birthday's next Sunday, Gemini's Rule, indeed. Um, trying the Edom I made soon. Excellent. That'll be fantastic. <clears throat> Excuse me. Thank you, Annette, for your super chat. And um, <clears throat> hang on, need a sip of coffee. Ah, there we go. Ah, lovely. All righty. Um, one more question. Let's do one more question. This is from Linda. Lucky last. Are there any issues using raw milk I should be aware of? Um, if you trust the source of the raw milk, like it's clean and you know the dairy or you milk it yourself, um, then you probably wouldn't have any issues. They are tend to be... It, the longer age cheeses tend to late blow because of um, contamination of the milk, which is hard to detect without a proper testing regime, testing the milk. So you could add a little bit of LPRA or whole back LC to the milk when you um, uh, when you make the cheese, or you can do low temperature, long hold pasteurization, which does preserve some of the enzymes uh, in the milk. So uh, if you're using the raw milk that's sold by, made by a cow, um, then you're good to go. I've used it without any issues whatsoever. It is um, cold pressed, which does kill some of the bad bacteria in the milk. Uh, and you get a lot of the enzymes are left over. So that's all good fun. Anyway, so that's it. Uh, thank you, everybody. Um, and thank you for all the happy birthday wishes, including Patricia. Thank you so much. Um, I really appreciate everybody um, turning up for the show today. Uh, without your questions, there wouldn't be a show, obviously. Um, 
So I will enjoy my birthday celebrations, enjoy smoking my cheese today, which will be good fun. So that'll be good fun. A little bit of gardening. It's a bit cold outside, but nonetheless, I'll get my gardening boots on and we'll go from there. A little bit of weeding. It's always good for the soul, isn't it? Um, but yeah, so no, um, no show next week. Birthday celebrations for Kim and I. But please join me on the 5th of June. There'll be just a normal Ask the Cheese Man. And then on the 12th of June, we have the 12 Hours of Cheese live stream, which will be an hour earlier than this normal time. So it'll be 7 a.m. my time till 7 p.m. my time, Australian Eastern Standard Time, whatever time that is in your country uh, where you live. But thank you, everybody, for turning up today. I've really appreciated it. And, uh, yeah, and all the Super Chats, thank you so much. Birthday love, I love it. All right, see you later, Curd Nerds, and I'll see you next time.